All right, Gibby, right? That's right. All that's right. right. So I want to show you a couple of things. So you've had this. When did this first pop up? I'd say about four days ago. All right, and uh, it's been draining a little bit. Right, I've been uh, you know, keeping an eye on it, cleaning it, and stuff like that as All much right. as I can. How about warm compresses? You've been putting warm compresses. I've done that a couple times. Okay, and and how much has come out of it or drained? Uh, it's on and off. Sometimes it seals up. Yeah. Sometimes when it does, like say I bump it into something or something, it'll decide to come out. Okay. Have you had any fevers, chills, mm -hmm. nausea, vomiting, anything like that? Mm -hmm. None of that. Good for you. Thank all you. right, so you see this red mark all the way around here? I do. Okay, so that's uh, the area inside is a cellulitis infection, right? So that means oh. that the staph infection, and this is presumptive staph. Okay. The staph infection is actually traveling under the skin, and that's why this is turned oh. red. One of the things that we like to do is take a marker, a pen, mm -hmm. and we like to kind of just mark the edges of this. Right. There we go. And uh, ask you to try not to wash that off, all right? Oh. Because that way we can track and make sure that this infection is actually receding. Right? Gotcha. So it goes right. See how it goes there? Mm -hmm. Right there. You can kind of, when I put the outline on it, it makes it easier to see. But over here is a little bit, oh, let's see, can you twist your arm? Yeah, of course. No, I'm kidding with you. <laughs> there we go, right there. So this is actually a fairly large cellulitis. Okay. And this is a furuncle. Actually, furuncle. it might be a carbuncle. So you see that spot right there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's an opening that's drained, and you're draining over here. So that's actually a carbuncle. So oh, wow. a furuncle means you have a single track. Carbuncle means you have oh. multiple tracks. And so you have a carbuncle. So here's what we're going to do with this. Uh, we're going to numb this up a little bit for you. Okay. Then we're going to do a little slit. Open it up. That's right. Gonna, now, this is not a cyst like um, an epidermoid cyst or a pilar cyst. Actually, it's not one on my wrist. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's a ganglion cyst, right? Right, right. Yeah. All right. So, this is actually just a plain old. Now, you thought maybe spider bite. Hey, right. could well, be. Thankfully, it wasn't. <laughs> could be. Who knows? Oh, okay. But we know right now that it's uh, carbuncle and mm -hmm. uh, that uh, staph is involved. So, we're okay. going to get a little culture, we're going to send that sure. off, and we're going to see what grows, right. and we might adjust treatment based on that. Okay. So Jenny um, is going to stop here in a moment, and yes. then we're going to get you set up, okay? Let's go on. Okay, we're back. Okay, she's got to make sure that she, she Jenny likes to be on the video. Mm -hmm. We're back with Gibby. We have an infected right forearm here. Pretty sure he thinks it might have been a spider involved. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell. I mean, that's a... and this showed up uh, about a week ago, you said? Yeah. It's yeah. Not. And then when did it get real ugly like this? I'd say fairly recent, like two days ago. Okay. It started swelling like that. Okay. All right. What's in the syringe? Hang on. What's in the syringe? Oh, water can't be that All right. Very good. Yeah. All right. I'll get it. I'll get it. So we don't want to spray the cold spray directly into the wound, right? right. This is ethylene chloride. We can actually cause more tissue damage there. Okay. So this is actually a cold spray. It's going to help this not hurt quite as much, but this will hurt a little bit, okay? okay. All right. You kind of expect if we put a needle in you, it would kind of hurt a little bit, right? Right, right. All right. I understand. That. Here we go. little stick. What's it going to feel? A stick a sting and a burn. Right. Okay. Here goes the medicine. Well, that went right into the wound there, so we really want it just to go into the skin like that. See that? Yes. That way it stays and actually will begin to give you some local anesthesia. There we go, right here. So we're just going to kind of go around like this. Hey, you're fine. You're fine. A little more there. I like to actually show the, uh, you know, the anesthesia because mm -hmm. it's a big part of the procedure, right? Yes. Right. And if we go all the way around like this, we've got a much better job of making this as painless a procedure for you as possible. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I like you. I like you when you I like it when you tell the audience students that when when the medication goes in the, mm -hmm. the skin turn white kind of mm -hmm. it blanches, right? It blanches. Yeah, it blanches. Okay. So let's give that just a moment. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to gently express this. After that, what we'll do is we'll get a culture. Let me give that to you. Uh, could I get a couple more 4x4s, four please, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks. All right, great. 
All right. You feeling anything there? Um, I'd say I don't. <laughs> so if I do this, that's not hurting? Yeah. One more time. So. Well, I, I pushed a little bit there. That didn't hurt? It's hard to tell, huh? Right. So we're going to give it a little kind of yes. push there. There we go. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so this could have been a spider bite. Look how that's uh, yes. a little bit necrotic in there, Jenny. Yeah. Now we're gonna. There we go. Oh, there it is. So that's wow. that's what happens when these things uh, are caused by a spider bite. So this this looks more like a spider bite to me. You actually have uh, a big opening here. Right. Did you realize that was there? I did not. I saw a little opening on it, yeah. but I didn't know it goes yeah. like that. So we're going to go ahead, and, and this is where you want to get your culture from. You want to get in here, and is this a regular uh, wound culture? Yes, sir. So we get it right up in there. Does that hurt? Mm -mm. Good for you. All right. Because, well, you know, we don't want you to feel pain, but right we right. needed to get in there. It's necessary. <laughs> All right. So this is a, a more complex wound. The fact that this is not bleeding very much is actually not a really good thing. It tells me that mm -hmm. there's been so much tissue damage that your body has already begun the, the process of walling off some of these vessels. All right. All right. So, um, thank you. Could I have uh, forceps? Do you have a toothed forcep? That is a hemostat. Do you yeah. have a forcep? With, with teeth? Yes, I like the teeth on my forceps sometimes. This is one of the <laughs> So we won't be able to put a stitch in this, okay? Right. We're gonna need to leave this either open or we need to pack it and we'll decide here in a few mm -hmm. minutes which one it's probably, we'll probably be able to just leave it open and put a dry dressing over it. Gotcha. So what that means uh, over the next 24 hours, this is going to ooze, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to ooze and you're gonna have to replace the dressing a few times, but we'll right. give you a wrap to kind of help. Okay. Um, I don't question is that, with it being like dead around the side, like you were saying, like, mm -hmm. I guess would that go away with time or is that? So your body's going to heal this, but it's going to take some time. That's right. 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 And you are going to have a scar when this is all said and done. Beautiful. All right. We have a little force up here. So what I'm going to do in That's here now it. is some of this necrotic material, some of uh -huh. this tissue in there, I'm just basically going to pluck it out. Okay. Uh -huh. There we go. So for those of you that are in a primary care setting, you're in a uh, urgent care setting, or you're in a you know, family medicine clinic in a rural area, that kind of thing, this is not something that you have to send to a surgeon. They don't have to go to the emergency department. You can treat these, okay? And uh, you treat it by making sure that you perform circumferential anesthesia all the way around, right? It's very important because if you miss a spot, it's gonna hurt. And then uh, gently remove the grayish colored, what appears to be necrotic or dead, right, tissue. And then use antibiotics. What's important here though, don't get any kind of ointment in here, right? Uh -huh. Gibby, that's for you too, right? So we don't wanna put any ointment in here because if we do, we'll plug areas off that uh, then could uh, cause an abscess to form. We don't want that, right? No abscess. This is mm -hmm. bad enough already, right? You Absolutely. might feel a little of this at the bottom. I hope not, but that's actually pretty good. Can I get a uh, cotton tipped applicator, please? Thank you. We're just about done, my friend. Yeah. Just uh, looks like your body had done most of the work for us. We didn't need oh, to make an actual incision, right? We didn't need to awesome. because we just... Due to all the necrotic. Yeah, you? we just gave it a, just a gentle, you know, mm -hmm. squeeze and... There we go. Could I also get a little bit of uh, dilute hydrogen peroxide? So I just want to make sure we don't have any areas that are loculated. And I think if we if we had an abscess or a loculated area here, we'd yeah, feel it. Yeah, we yeah. don't. You don't. What We're okay. Uh, inoculated? Or loculated. 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 I mean, would mean uh, like an area where fluid is walled off. Oh, right. There we go. There we are. Thank you. Perfect. And just a little of the bubbly in here. Ooh, not fun, huh? No, that's going to be good. All right. So I sent in, uh, I've already uh, taken care of the antibiotic for you. So you're going to take uh, trimethoprim. Okay. We have really great staph sensitivity in our area for trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. You're going to take one of those pills twice a day. Okay. And when you get over to the pharmacy here, I realize it's mid-afternoon. You can take one right away in the pharmacy. You'll take the second one tonight before you go to bed. Then it's going to be twice a day, all right? 
uh, we want to see you tomorrow. We want to re-examine this, make sure this looks like it's getting better tomorrow. Okay. All right, so uh, let's get you on the schedule to come in tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow's Friday. We should sure. be fine there. And um, fortunately, we're going to have to give you a little cephalosporin injection. Unfortunately? Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, it might hurt a little bit. It's like a thicker needle or something? Uh, <laughs> a longer. Did, did this hurt much when we injected that? I wouldn't say it was too bad. Yeah, the shot will probably hurt a little bit more than that, I guess. Okay. Gotcha. Any other questions? Can you take a shower? Yes, absolutely. Remove the dressings. Yeah. Take a hot shower. This can get all wet. That's fine. Okay. When you dry, just pat. You don't have to right. wipe or rub, okay? Gotcha. Any questions, Jenny? Um, not You're that Gibby. She's Jenny. Right. It's close. It's close enough. <laughs> no, Jenny didn't have any further comments. Yes. Uh, so do not put any, just, just band on just we're going to put a dry dressing on this and then we're going to wrap it for you this will continue to ease now the uh, medicine that we use for anesthesia we had a bit of uh, a uh, a medicine in there that kind of reduces the amount of bleeding right um, but that'll wear off and this will bleed a little bit more so just having a gotcha. pressure on there uh, should take care of it mm. but uh, you may need to change it out a couple of times don't be surprised it's going to bleed through or ooze that's that's okay. fine that's all you know epinephrine Part is what process, we use and it's right. a potent vasoconstrictor and it kind of once that wears off in a few hours you will get a little bit more bleeding don't let that gotcha. frighten you now if bleeding soaks all the way through and right. you know mm. squirting out or something crazy well yeah call us you know we have somebody on call after hours no problem yes gotcha, yes all right. Very good. Thanks for letting us uh, record this, and um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You betcha. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> hey, folks. Are you wondering how to boost your immune system to help protect yourself in cold and flu season? Well, maybe it's time for you to stack up on Meta7. Meta7 ingredients like B12 and B6 are the building blocks to a healthy immune system. In fact, according to health.com, Vitamin B12 is a powerhouse. It helps make DNA, nerve and blood cells, and is crucial for a healthy brain and immune system. So if you're over 50, don't eat a balanced diet, or suffer from fatigue and could use a nice boost, then try Meta7 today. I can think better and um, all around it's helped me out. Do you feel shaky, jittery, or anything like no, that? No, not at all. Fantastic. It made me feel much better physically and uh, actually mentally. Ever since I started taking it, I have energy throughout the day. I have no problem making it through my runs. Energy all night. I'm in a good mood. Check out the Amazon links in the description below. And you can order today with Amazon Prime.